Hello and welcome to the Audio Production Workshop in association with Candom Rocks. Uh, on episode two we have Andy Carnes doing uh, four lovely session tracks for us. Uh, we also have him deep in interview talking about past recordings, present recordings, uh, his rig, his acoustic rig and lots of bits in between. Uh, we also have on Tested this week some toys that we're going to be running whilst Andy's doing his session and these are the toys. I'm going to give you a quick sneak preview. Ta-da, so there we go, and we'll take you through which one, uh, which ones are what, and uh, what they sound like in ABs and all that malarkey. But anyway, welcome to episode two. Right, let's call me the abstract. Welcome to the Audio Production Workshop in association with Camden Rocks. Uh, I'm here with the ever wonderful Andy Carnes for Therapy. And uh, you're playing Camden Rocks on mm. the uh, 3rd of June. Mm. This is your second time, am I right? Yeah, yes. well, it's the first time it's a solo uh, acoustic show. Right, We've okay. done it before a few years ago with a band. Nice. Mm. Uh, what acoustic guitar are you playing? What's um, your main one for these wooden wire? It's a Gibson J200. I okay. got it about... Um, about four years ago, in 2013-2014, uh -huh. and I'd been doing a couple of just low-key acoustic shows that I was asked to do by certain venues, mm -hmm. and I had an old Norman Canadian acoustic, which yeah. sounded a bit thin and a bit bright, mm -hmm. and I went down to see the Gibson people in London and try a few acoustics, and I really liked the J200, and I've just had it ever since. I keep it under my bed. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. This is the Tested section. And uh, on this section of Tested, what we have done is we've taken three of the top preamps, acoustic preamps, and uh, recorded them flat on the actual performance. Uh, and obviously with that, we've taken a plain DI signal uh, from Andy's guitar as well on multi. Uh, afterwards, what we have done is we've um, sent it back through a reamp box and just recorded and shown you what the different tones you can get out of these preamps so if you uh, keep watching the show you'll find out at the end what they sound like and I think you'd be quite surprised all right this is called nowhere oh 
haven't kicked you out You wouldn't wear a tie Staring at some pictures by yourself Something that you wanna have but will never get Going nowhere Going nowhere Going nowhere Going nowhere They get drunk every night I get drunk on life Shouting out the world you'll never change But it's what's inside you got to rearrange Going away Heaven kicked you out Oh, heaven kicked you out Making a Because obviously I've recorded you a few times mm. over the years. Um, could you please tell the list, uh, the viewers, yes. um, how where it started and how it evolved yeah. and what you what you've got now? The very first record we ever did, I had a Fender Twin. Mm. Um, I had four. I had a PV Hop distortion. I had a Boss Stereo Chorus. I had a Dodd compressor sustainer, and I had a Boss DSD two digital delay. I played a Epiphone 335 uh, dot uh, through that, and that was my rig. And it was all standard tuning. And then by the time of our second mini album, the only thing had changed was I was playing a USA Fender Tele. Mm -hmm. And then from 1993 onwards, I moved to Gibson guitars, mainly SGs. Is that the X? Was that the SGX? I didn't change until the SGX, really, until I accidentally got one in 2009. Before that, I was okay. always just SG standards. Right. Uh, through two Marshall 900 cabs uh, with more or less the same pedal rig. Mm -hmm. And uh, nowadays, I use the same Marshall 900s, 4 by 12 cabs. I've got a Gibson SGX. I've got four of those. They were like a, a limited edition made a few years ago with like a active pickup circuit. Are these the TTs? Uh, they've got the 500T pickups oh, in 500Ts, them, yeah. which are a lot more distorted, and I really like those. Mm. Um, and it's more or less been the same effects pedals as well. I've been used okay. ever since. The only thing that's changed is that distor I don't use the distortion now. I get that through the amplifier from mm. driving it. Oh, cool. But I still use the same Boss pedals that I've always used. It's called Crutch. Since I can remember Far longer than I care to know Always 
girls ready to light me up in your toxic glow An old one that I can't stop licking I can't seem to leave you alone Like a scab that I can't stop picking I can't let you go You were the fire that gave me life Now I wish that I'd left you alone You were the fire that set me alive Now you're just a crutch and I can't let go All my greatest regrets You're somewhere in the frame You take more than you give back in I'm ashamed Of all the things that I have broken I'm acting in your name A wretched sorry mess to which I am chained You were the spark that gave me life Now I wish That I left you alone You once were the fire That set me alight Now you're just a crutch And I can't let go Obviously, you have a, a very long uh, recording career, mm -hmm. and um, I'm assuming by now you know how you like to be recorded or how you like to record. Yeah. What's kind of like your 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 favourite vibe uh, for that? Well, things change with us because we started so long ago. You know, we, we, we started our first recording we did in Christmas of 1989, mm -hmm. the first one that got released. It got released in 1990. There was no digital when we started recording, and mm -hmm. then... Uh, the first album we actually did digitally was in 2007. Oh, okay. Which was uh, uh, called One, One Cure Fits All. Before then, everything was done completely right. analog. So that was always, you know, it took a while. When we, whenever we went to digital recording, that changed things a little bit. Mm. It meant that we could record actually a lot quicker mm. because okay. the process was a lot quicker. Uh, the, the last four or five albums have been great. We've recorded them in a wonderful, wonderful studio called Blast Studios up in the northeast of England in Newcastle upon Tyne. Mm. And it's got a lovely sound. That's um, an SSL console, isn't that's it? That's an SSL console. Mm. And we do that with really just old-fashioned drums first, then we add the bass, then rhythm guitars, vocals last. Mm. Um, but, you know, I, I quite like... Um, I quite like doing it that way. You know, there has been times in the past we did an album called Suicide Packed You First. That was with Head. That was with Head. Uh, he, was, Milton he was Keynes. great. Well, we started that in Milton Keynes in Great Linford Manor, which yeah. was owned by Pete Winkleman, who's now the chairman of MK Dons. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we were there whenever that whole takeover thing was beginning to take seed. Mm. We did that, we did the drums there, and then we moved from there um, to where did we go? Oh no, we did the whole album there. Yeah, it was Infernal Love. We did the drums at Milton Keynes, and then we right. went to Real World. Yeah. Okay, oh, lovely. And Real World, and that was that. Um, Real World's Peter Gabriel's place in yeah, Box in, in the Bath. West. Yeah, in Bath. And, and it that was, was with Al Clay. That was with Al Clay. Why? Why? Why Al Clay? I have to ask this because he did a lot with um, Hans Zimmer. Yes, he did. There's an embarrassing story behind this, actually, and it's <laughs> something which I really, really 
feel really bad about. We really we did Trouble Gum with Chris Sheldon, who was an amazing producer, mm. and for the follow up, we 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 should have worked with Chris to be honest, mm. because he, we had a really good relationship with him. But we were so um, fast working in those days and, and so prolific, we decided, oh, let's completely change it. Let's not make Trouble Gum Part Two, mm. and we really really wanted a guy called Flood. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now, in 1994, we'd, we'd said to a record company, can we get Flood? We love the, we love the stuff he's done with Depeche Mode. Mm. And they said, okay. And in the meantime, we did the Monsters of Rock Festival 1994. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a program put out that you buy at the festival. Mm. And I'd been interviewed for it. And, and I'd said, oh, the next album we're going to record soon after this festival. I'd love to do it with a guy called Flood. Yeah. But what they'd printed was we're doing it with a guy called Flood. Which okay. wasn't, and he read this, and as you can imagine, he wasn't too enamoured. And he wow. basically, our record company went to him and he said, I didn't like the last album, and I don't like people presuming they're going to work with me. So you, so I'm not going to work with them. And we were like, oh my God. So, ha, um, I'm surprised he wasn't flattered. Uh, no, I don't, well, I mean, he had worked with you two in Depeche Mode, Nine yeah, Inch Nails. True. I mean, he was a way, way bigger than Therapy were. He was a bigger producer than the Therapy were a band. And, um, Al Clay was a very good friend of Flood's and he had mm. been an assistant. Right. And what happened was our A&R guy, a &M, said, OK, well, we've got a really good producer now called Al Clay. He's he's worked with Flood, so he uses the same techniques. Mm. He's also worked with, you know, Hollywood movie soundtracks. He can get the cinematic thing you're looking for. And we weren't sure because we'd never heard of Al. And then we met up with him and he was an amazing bloke. Yeah. And he was very, very open-minded. Because so he also did some Pixie stuff as well, he didn't did, he? He did Pixies and Frank Black stuff. He did mm. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds stuff as well. Were you in the big room at Real World? Yes. Or were, yes, you were in the big room. We were in the big room. And that's amazing, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, yeah, I think the, the control room you can have as all one area, can't yeah. you? Yeah. So you're recording and it's you're not divided by any walls, I think. That's, That's right, you can, can, yeah. Learn. We had, I mean, we, we went daft there. We set up, uh, it was so big, we were able to set up a Skelextrix track running around it. We spent <laughs> a fortune on Skelextrix. Marvellous. Uh, you know, and uh, whenever one of us weren't doing a take, we would do this. I mean, it was, because Al Clay was really into cars, so we got, mm. like, these Skelextrix Porsches and all this kind of thing. <laughs> But you know, it was great, a great place and uh, really good. Maybe a bit too fancy for us of where we were in our career. I think, you know, it was, uh, but it was a lovely, lovely place and the people there were amazing. Yeah. Which uh, which actually does lead me on to my next question. Which studio has impressed you the most? To be honest, the one I like the most at the minute is Blast, that we're up yeah. to in Newcastle. I just love it. I just love where it is. It's up uh, Stepney Bank. It's uh, It's been recently developed, the area. It's got the Clooney venue just down the road. It's okay. got... Um, nice pubs and rehearsal rooms and it's it's a really kind of very creative hub mm. but the studio itself is nicely tucked away down this little kind of old industrial unit which is kind of an l shape and then i suppose other ones i liked over the years uh, i used to really really love uh, homestead in randallstown owned by the legendary right. mud wallace it's gone now and it was the only residential studio in the north of ireland at the right. time and by residential it meant a small room with one bunk bed you know <laughs> but that did us how, how was mud to work with uh, Mud Mud did one of the best things ever I've ever ever seen. Uh, whenever he worked with us, we recorded the first album Baby Teeth in like a day and a half. Right. And I was working in a factory at the time, not far, and mm. I would basically record all our tracks. Mm. And I'd gone to work at the factory, and came back, and the drums were really loud, and I couldn't hear my guitar, and the bass was middling. And I just I'd, I'd start at work at eleven, come back at seven. They'd be mixing all night, so I walked in. And I said, I can't hear the guitar. And Mother went, well, you know, Fife wants the drums really loud. And then Michael went, well, I want my bass turned up. So he, the bass was turned up. And at the end, I said, I still can't hear the guitar. And Mud just went right. And he pushed everything up and said, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Are you happy now? And it sounded amazing. <laughs> and it was like, he was great to work with it. You know, he's even for vocal takes because... Um, you know, we did everything completely sober, but Fife at the time was very shy about singing. You know, at this mm. point in time, whenever we used to gig, he was hidden, you know, behind the cymbals yeah, and the mic. You can so, kind you know, of hide a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and he kind of a little yeah. bit, but, you know, we're in the studio when everyone was watching him, so we had to, like, dim the lights and whatever. And it wasn't really happening, and um, he went out of the studio and came back with a case of beer and a bottle of tequila <laughs> and just walked into the room with a microphone and says, give this a go. Yeah. And, of course, everyone's inhibitions went, and yeah, it was yeah. great, and, <laughs> Oh, Which is probably why some of the vocals sound like people are getting their teeth pulled on that album. <laughs> right, 
Hello and welcome to Tested. Now, um, we had the wonderful Andy Carnes in from Therapy for the audio production workshop and uh, he's done four amazing tracks for us and uh, one of them is called Meet Abstract and basically it's off uh, the first album, Baby Teeth. Um, and yeah, um, he, he played it extremely well, all acoustic for the Wood and Wire tour. And uh, what we did here, um, which uh, I'll come and show you, is we did uh, a little test, which was a, if you want to follow me, did a little bit of a test and uh, we played around with three acoustic preamps. Uh, the first one was a Fishman, uh, the second one was a Radial, and the first one, not really a preamp per se, but a pedal nonetheless, it's an acoustic simulator from Boss. Uh, and what we've done is we've taken... Um, the out of the console and use the reamp so then split the signal again and do a pre and then a post uh basically how do they sound how, how what what can we do with them what you know do they sound good or not right so um and these are the results so if we go back to him um what we've already done is we've done a little bit of a mix so i've muted um the initial acoustic um di's off his lovely uh, gibson acoustic guitar that he's got and muted the mics, done a little bit of uh, vocal work, but I just want to give you the pre and post and how do they sound, whether they will work um, in a mix situation. Um, so here we go. Let's let's do Fishman pre and post. So here's Fishman uh, pre with Andy's vocal. <laughs> trouble I've seen no one knows my mind right here's post no one knows the trouble I've seen no one knows my mind I don't know if you noticed um, there would have been a little bit of a sped up thing that you probably did see and uh, this is basically the EQ curve that we managed to do on the uh, Fishman um, as you can tell, there's a little bit more bump at the lower end. Uh, pretty much flat all the way through, but on the mid, it's, there's still a little bit of a bump for, for a few dB. Um, didn't hit the compression at all. Did add a little bit more on depth, but that was pretty much it. Um, now, one of the things that did surprise me, because we're going to move on now to the radial, the PZDI. Um, and this is the radial post. Let's move that up. Um, the rate, there's not much to do EQ wise, there's like a high and low filter on the radial. Um, but what you will see is it pretty much sounds pretty darn good off the bat um, without having to do much to it. Um, so this is that again, but this time with the radial pre. No one knows the trouble I've seen. No one knows my mind. This is radial post. I've seen no one knows my mind Don't so if you come over here I think the only thing we did do was insert the uh, the high cut on this um, did try the filter but because it's such a low end picky uh, kind of uh, track uh, you didn't want to really filter up at those low ends but we did put the high cut in which did take a little bit of that obvious DI noise out of it but all in all, that is, um, was sounding pretty great as soon as you plugged it in. Um, and now the one that's actually quite surprising um, out of all these to me is the acoustic simulator. Um, admittedly, Andy does have an, a, a really good guitar on this anyway, um, but it's amazing what you can do with just a little bit of a tweak or something like this and what it can do to, to your mix and what can it help with. So here's the acoustic sim on its own. No one knows the trouble I've seen. No one knows my mind. And here's it post. Now, what we went for this, actually, let me just run it first. No one knows the trouble I've seen. No one knows my mind. So, there you've got that. Now, if you come over here. There's obviously lots of different options on this. So for this one, we went with, um, I went through them all and just had a little bit of a play, which you would have seen on the, the sped up stuff. Um, but basically we went with standard, uh, 
add a tiny tiny little bit of body on it not much I mean if that's you know zero is minimum um, and then basically all the top all the way down and you know it has its own own different vibe again um, so there you go this is that again. no one knows the trouble I've seen no one knows my mind both post post <laughs> And then boast, uh, boss free. There you go. <laughs> no one knows the trouble I've seen. No one knows my mind. And let's give you a very quick run through of just the post signals. So let's go radial post, boss post. Let's do those. So. No one knows the trouble I've seen. No one knows my mind. Don't think about it, you won't feel bad. You can't touch me now. Gonna go radial. Hates freedom, hates freedom, hates freedom, hates freedom. Boss. There you go that is a few acoustic preamps on a session run back through um, I would actually possibly do this more often I think it's a, it's a good thing to do uh, especially if you've got certain characteristics and colors that you can bring up um, and yeah there you go that's uh, three different preamps on a, an acoustic session on shameless mm record there that was at Robert Lang's studio did yeah. anything weird happen the Your, ghost the ghost, the ghost in Robert Lang's studio was there anything weird that happened in there uh, there wasn't actually and I found it really beautiful it's I a mean, beautiful studio it's a, beautiful it's a lot, place, lot of yeah. marble a lot of yeah. stone yeah um, and, and I it, think at that time, what, what was recording there? I think Soundgarden had just done their album. Uh, the Foo Fighters had done their first. Yeah, yeah it was a Nirvana did their last ever track they ever yeah. recorded. Yeah, yeah, I think you know you're right. Was recorded there, mm. but um, that was beautiful. I mean, I, the material it was written for wasn't that great, but working with Jack and Dino in Seattle in Bob Lang Studios was an yeah. incredible experience. Does it overlook a lake as well? It fun? does. I mean, you come out you come out of the studio uh, from the the entrance and you can overlook a lake, but you can actually there's a little viewing area up where there's a little rec room oh, which nice. is an even better view yeah. but, but Jack and Dino boy does he work I mean yeah. he's a real he works really really hard there's no messing about with Jack mm. you know no alcohol in the studio uh, you, you 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 get out of that studio when the stuff's done does, so he do, does he do times as well like it's this time to this time no wee hours of the morning it's just you come in and you oh, do he, do, he does both oh, he does I both. mean I don't know where he gets his energy from you literally, you literally he'll be there to three or four in the morning going mm. right back in tomorrow at nine and when you get there at nine he's been there from eight Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, he, he's he works very very hard. Oh, amazing! Uh, thanks for obviously doing the audio production workshop. You're very welcome. Show, Shemekanda Rocks. Yeah. Uh, how many more dates have you got left on the Wooden Wire tour? We have six more. Six we more. are going to start the twenty fifth in um, Dublin, a twenty sixth Belfast, twenty seventh on Dock, twenty eighth Cork, twenty ninth Limerick, and thirtieth of April is Glasgow and Galway. Oh, amazing! And then after that's the festivals. Yeah. Oh. Brilliant. Andy, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having us on. Thank oh, you. No, my pleasure. When sadness fills your heart Sorrow has a longing to be free When things go wrong each day You fix your mind to escape your misery Your troubled young life had made you turn To a needle of death How strange your hands to bring a smile from anyone 
how tears have filled the eyes of friends that you once had walked among. Your troubled young life had made you turn to a needle of death. On grain of pure white snow, Dissolved in blood spreads quickly to your brain In peace your mind withdraws Your death's so near your soul can't feel no pain And your troubled young life had made you turn To a needle of death Your mother stands a-crying while to the earth your body slowly cast Your father stands in silence Caressing every young dream of the past And your troubled young life had made you turn To a needle of death Through ages man's desire Free his mind, release his very soul Has proved to all who live That death itself is freedom forevermore And your troubled young life had made you turn To a needle of death That's it, I'm afraid, for this episode, but please comment below on what bands you want in, equipment tested or even techniques uncovered. Uh, please also like, subscribe and head over to the audioproductionworkshop.com. Uh, that's where you'll find the latest tested results, news and reviews, and also who's coming up next on the APW.